What's going on everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. In today's video, we're taking a look at the brand new version of the RPCSX PlayStation 3 emulator for Android. The RPCSX version 2.0 got released. This latest update brings some cool changes and improvements that you're definitely going to want to check out, so let's get right into it. Also, in my recent video, I already covered the best settings for the RPCSX emulator, both for Snapdragon Adreno GPUs with custom driver settings and for Mali GPU devices. Now in this new update, they've added some new features, fixed a few crashes and bugs, and also updated the internal drivers in the emulator. All you need to do is simply download and update RPCSX I've already updated mine to the latest version. Same as usual, these are the games I've already installed. Let's go over to settings. Here, you'll see a few new options. They've added a download channel section and controller configuration. In the channel section, you'll be able to access the official sources of the RPCSX emulator, where you can get GPU drivers, the RPCSX UI, and other important files. Now, if we go into custom GPU driver, I've already added the compatible turnip driver based on my phone. I'm using turnip driver version 25 R2 and R3, which is well optimized for the Snapdragon 8 Gen series and even some 6 series chips. I already have a separate video all about drivers. If you missed it, check out the link in the description or in the cards. Let's head into controls. This part is new. They've added haptic feedback support for the virtual controller, and you can also customize the key mappings. And that's it, those are the main new changes. Let's go to advanced settings. All the performance settings here are the same as I showed in my recent videos. Set the resolution to the lowest, 480p, shader precision to low, and the rest stays the same. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll notice that they've moved a couple of options down here. Under Vulkan, go to Custom Driver and make sure Turbo Mode is enabled. Performance Overlay should also be turned on to get FPS readings. And that's pretty much it. Alright guys, now it's time for the test. Also, a lot of you have been asking me, why are you always testing demo versions and not the full versions? Well, we all know this emulator is still under development, so running full versions usually causes crashes. Plus, the compilation process for full games takes a long time. That said, some full games are already compatible like God of War 3, GTA 5, GTA 4, and couple of others. Like very recently, YouTuber tested the full version of God of War 3, and it actually performs really well on the Snapdragon 8 Elite. Like guys, we almost came so far but still need more improvements in the coming updates of this emulator. Anyways, Okay. Okay, it's very laggy in here with the choppy frames. Anyway, let's save the state of this game. Okay, moving on. This is Devil May Cry 4, and here we're almost getting a stable 60 FPS. That's pretty amazing. I'll also be testing it soon on a Mali GPU device, including both Exynos and MediaTek devices. It's looking really great and promising so far. All right, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to us, and turn on notifications so you're always up to date with the latest videos. Got any suggestions or questions? Drop them in the comments below. I'm always checking and happy to help. Thanks a lot for watching, and as always, and I'll see you in the next one.